So now we've finished our red panda habitat, I think we should name our red pandas. And I know that we had a request for a pair of males, uh, a couple of male names, but obviously in this zoo, we're, we're breeding them. So they're probably not gonna get to use the, uh, the male names. I don't know why they're climbing like this as well. <laughs> this is so weird. There you go. Oh no, they're slightly below the, uh, the level. That's a bit odd, but anyway. Um, the two names we're gonna use for these two uh, red pandas are Harry and Ezra. So I hope you guys are happy with your pair of red pandas. I think they're absolutely adorable. We also missed uh, just linking this up to the red pandas and we need to put it into the work zone. So that's just our educator, um, our education post we need to link up. And this is in the Asia entrance area. So I'm just gonna attach that in here. Oh, and it seems we've also missed the solar panels from the, the zoo work zone because they're shown in red. So I'm just gonna put them in there along with this uh, education stands we can get included. We should have everything in this zoo work zone. So cool, we do. That's great. I think we're ready to move on from this habitat now. Now that they're happy with their little their little place. Um, they're only 50% on enrichment. Ah, oh, they need more toys. That makes a lot of sense. They haven't really got a lot. They've only got food enrichment, I think, at the minute. Um, we've also need to repair some solar panels, right? These are the bane of the zoo. I'm gonna, every three months, they're gonna get repaired. Um, is this one the same over here while we're over here? Yeah, every three months. Okay, I'm gonna delete that alert. And then we've got diseased, oh no, okay, we've got a diseased lemur. Probably due to cleanliness. I think the vet's already taken care of it though. So that's good, they're on top of things. I'm gonna delete that one as well. So the next thing we wanna do is probably expanding this area out over here with a little uh, zoo school that I was planning along with if I can type it correctly, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. So, Perez Welski's horse. That that's perfect. Actually, that was I really nailed the pronunciation there. Um, we can only afford to get a male, and oh, there's a female here that we can get. So I'm actually going to get these. I'm going to adopt this female and this male, who's not got great um, immunity, but other than that, he's absolutely fine. So, just checking what. Uh, sizes they need to be in p r z e right uh, they're endangered obviously look how beautiful they are as well like that's such an adorable animal and they're in species of three to eight okay so you need three one male and multiple females well we better start getting um oh there's another female here okay i didn't go to multiple pages so let's get probably these two slightly more expensive females and then get a reasonable mail. We can just buy them with uh, money. So I think we will in this case. This is quite a good one. General like all round mail. We could get a better one here, but I'm quite happy with this one actually. So let's go with this guy. I'm gonna adopt him. He's got good fertility, which is what I'm looking at mostly because it'd be great if they've got great genetics, but the main thing is that we have lots of them. And maybe we should get a few females. Let's get another female, because why not? Why not have loads of them? So we've got five. That's that's on the upper end of their... Yeah, three to eight. So that's, that's a good amount for them. Um, we do need to check the amount of space they need as well, because uh, probably a reasonable amount. So let's say we've got five adults and five babies. We need a good amount of space, but that's fine, because we have this whole area over here, and I am tempted to add it into the same work zone, have the entrance over here and just get another keeper and put them into the uh, into the same work zone as uh, the rest of them into the Asia entrance work zone. In fact, we didn't need to hire a new keeper because we have an extra keeper before, but I'm not gonna fire anyone because I feel like that's way too mean um, and we have loads of money. So I'm just add gonna add this new one into Asia entrance and we know we have an extra one in Africa entrance, which we realized I think in the last episode um, which we do need to sort out. I'm gonna train everyone up to make sure everyone's as good as they can be at their job. So we've just had a baby Lechwe. Look how cute they are. I think we could probably do with renaming a few of these because I don't think, oh no, I think it's just this baby. Um, I'll have a look in the Lechwe habitat, but I feel like we've had a few babies. Yeah, we have. We've had a few babies. So we'll just go through and just make sure that all of these have some names from the name list. So this little Nile Lechwe is gonna be called Emmy. Look at them running. And this little lechwe over here is gonna be called Koi, which I think is a cool name. Then we're gonna have Toto, who's a slightly older lechwe. We're gonna have Latte, <laughs> again, another adult. 
another lechery who's a bit older is going to be Violet. Then this tiny little baby behind the giraffe is going to be Liz. These giraffes are so massive compared to the, the lechery. It's hilarious. And our final little lechery baby is going to be Ursula. If I can spell Ursula correctly. <laughs> now, I've just seen as well that we've had a few babies, which we're just going to um, trade out the zoo. Some exhibit babies, which is always good for our cash. We're making lots of money at the minute, so that's uh, that's pretty good. It's good to be in this position. We could increase our marketing as well. I've set them to renew. Um, at the minute, we've only got two stars, so maybe we should do some more family stuff. Maybe we'll do um, some TV commercials at Family Hour. Oh, these are more expensive. Let's do some online campaign. Let's do an online campaign with Gulpy videos. Um, begin marketing for that. And then, uh, yeah, we can renew that every year. Oh my goodness. It says that the bears escaped. That's so funny. It's because they can climb a little bit further out, I think. Let's just click on them. I don't think they have actually escaped. I think it's just where they are. Yeah, they can get out at the top. That's so funny. Okay, we just need to add another little rock in here. Because um, the bears can't get out, but apparently these guys can. Um, I'm not sure which theme we're going with these rocks. I think it might be tundra. Oh no, I think it's... Uh, tiger. Okay, uh, I'm just going to whack another big rock in here. Um, about there. That should seal it off and do the trick. Let's just check on the heat map when it updates. Uh, they can't get out anywhere, so they are all good. This little rascal, maybe this one needs a name. Okay, there are a lot of requests for the baby boy name, and we're going to go with Boo Boo, um, which I think is from Brother Bear. <laughs> um... But yeah, look at him. He's so cute. Being a little rascal. Running around. Doing his thing. Where is mum and dad? They're somewhere else. They're a little bit bigger and a little bit scarier. <laughs> I think they're the only baby in here. Oh, there you go. There's mum. There's Peanut. She's uh, she's just walking around. Living her best life. They've got quite a big habitat as well. They're, um, they're doing quite well. So let's just check the size of this habitat. Yeah, it's, it's massive, um, and there are three of them at the minute. Yeah, they've just got one baby, which is brilliant. So we're already breeding the Himalayan brown bears as well. I think it's probably time to start uh, building this habitat over here, though, and uh, get the get the basis for where our zoo school is going to be, too. Okay, I think that's a pretty weird shape that I'm reasonably happy with. Um, I need to check actually what uh, resistance they need. I should have done that first, but they do need grade two and more than 1.25 meters. So we could actually select the whole thing and bring it down to uh, 1.25, which is a little bit nicer at 1.26, and then it's definitely over 1.25. And that gives quite a nice low, uh, low fence. that uh, We can still put glass in uh, for the kids, but the adults can see over, which is much nicer. Um, I much prefer it uh, normally as well, and it makes it feel like it's less uh, kind of like them being boxed in. I'm going to put one way glass on as well and just make sure it's on the correct side. So now the horses can't see out, but the guests can see in. And I'm also just going to move all these benches to the other side. Okay, so we also want to build a little area in here, and I don't actually mind it going past... The, uh, the solar panel. In fact, I might just move the solar panel over here for now, and then we know to move it back. Um, and I'm going to delete this area. So now I'm going to set this to be seven meters because that's the width of the path, the main path we have. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom where we've got natural path. And I'm going to use this one because it's got the wooden fences. And if I hold control, you can see what I mean. Um, it's got these wooden fences around it. And I'm just going to build out a little path, a little area in here that's going to be used for the zoo school. Okay, so now we've moved the solar panel back and we have this little entrance in here. I think I'm going to paint this so that it's um, like a, a nice soily color. 
Um, so that I might use heavy soil and then go over it in light soil so that if, if like a, a child fell over, they wouldn't be hurt. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. This gives kind of like a, a soily area. And now we need to add a little building in here that's actually going to serve as the main education building. Okay, I've just built kind of a frame to this building and then I've built loads of guest barriers and put them underground, which still works above ground. So basically the guests won't be able to walk through the walls of this building. That's what we've accomplished uh, with that. But they will be able to go inside because it's on the path. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted them to be able to come in here and we can try and put some stuff in here that they're able to do on the inside of this uh, building, this like zoo school. So I'm just gonna add a roof to the building now. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with the flowers on there. I, I think the lobster claws are a bit ridiculous, but I kind of like it at the same time. Um, and we do need to add windows and doors. But other than that, I think we've got a pretty good frame coming along for this. Um, so I'm just going to add the windows and doors now. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about why we've got this. Okay, we've added some glass in. Um, the door we're going to leave as it is because this uh, guest can actually get through this and come through and have a look. Um, and I think it looks pretty decent from the inside. We've got a little bit of a of a beam there. You can kind of see the uh, the barriers, um, which I'm just going to get rid of now. Okay. 
Okay, I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, so the purpose of this zoo school and why we've just built this building here is to teach kids about the animals that um, we have in the zoo. And I thought it'd be great to have this right next to the uh, the horse uh, ex uh, habitat because the horses are like beautiful animals that kids can actually, you know, it's, it's not something scary. Like it's it's more accessible, I guess, in that way to, to all kids. Um, they're quite quiet and, you know, well, as quiet as horses are. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, it's a good animal to have around horses compared to tigers or bears or something, you know. Something that's a little bit more scary or, or like penguins that are super noisy and, you know, may, may cause issues for some children with uh, too much noise. Um, we've got a few plants going through the ceiling. I'm going to leave that because it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough um, for us to call it there. Um, I'm going to add some stuff to the inside of it now that I think is kind of animal themed and just kind of make it look a little bit like an area that kids would be able to access and get taught about the animals. And we're also going to add in um, an animal talk point just in here for the horse. And we could even have a little seated area if we move this over to this side. Um, we could add in some seating and then they could have a little talk on the animals, which I think would be really cute. And we also are going to put in some benches and bins and just kind of populate this area so it's a little bit more uh, usable for, for the kids. Okay, <laughs> we've got quite a bit of drainage going on now in this, uh, which I just thought I'd add as well because have some water bars, re you know, collect some of the water we have. It's not perfect, but it's it's reasonable. And I'm going to assume if we ignore just these plants that are kind of sticking out, they've grown a bit wild, um, that this whole area, we're going to assume that this has some kind of Solu like irrigation solution so that we're recycling this water too so when it drips off the roof in this way it's it's used to keep the plants alive and um it gets recycled into another system or into these water butts through like the internal pipe network that we will have uh, in the walls that you can't see and then inside i think we've got quite a cute little area where kids can learn about animals particularly the horse then we have our full-on teaching area out here and we haven't set to the species i don't even think we put them into storage yet we haven't uh, not into storage, into quarantine. So I'm going to move them from storage into quarantine right now. And then once they're done, I'm going to click play. And once they're done, we can move them into habitat and start um, properly decorating the habitat. But I'm quite glad we added just like a little uh, zoo score here. I think it just gives it something a bit different. And I like doing these little touches that are like a little bit different to what you'd normally get in a... Uh, in a normal zoo if you're just playing planet zoo and not necessarily thinking about like a real life thing that might be cool to add we've also just had a new baby oryx and for this little girl we're gonna call her sonia in fact i tell you what we should do we should go through our our staff members and rename some of these because we've got loads of these that need names and i have a massive list of names that you guys have suggested so i'm going to go through and do that now we have a keeper who's currently looking after our penguins and she's going to be called dora Mura Desa to you too. We have another female keeper who's looking after our exhibits currently, and we're going to call her 
Elena or Elena. We have another female keeper who's just by our pangolin exhibit at the minute, and she is going to be called Emma. Was that you? That's quite a deep voice, Emma, if that was you. I'm assuming that was a different keeper. <laughs> I think it was this guy who was speaking before. Um, so this is another keeper we're going to call Jack. Oh no, Scooby's died. Oh, poor Scoobs. We're going to have to get some more um, some more uh, dogs in our dog habitat. I'm not sure how many we've got right now. I mean, I presume they're breeding. Oh my goodness, we've only got three. Oh wow, okay, we definitely need some more dogs. Let's just do that now while we remember. I'm going to set this to African wild dog. And we can get some more dogs because I know there are loads of dog names that you guys wanted as well. And that's five dogs, so that's probably enough. I'm going to send these to our quarantine. And we have another keeper over here who's just in a massive crowd of people. I'm going to call her Rio. Then we've got an educator who's doing a talk on our giraffes currently. And we're going to call him... David Attenborough, which I think I've spelled correctly, but please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> he is kind of a national treasure, so I think that would be, uh, that might be treason actually in the UK. I need to look that up. And Jean is going to be renamed to Coco Puff, <laughs> which is an interesting name. <laughs> Jane Mills is going to be named to Ms. Frizzle. Lance, who's about to do a talk on... Oh, there's a there's a broken sign here. I'm going to replace that. Uh, Lance, who's about to do a talk on the Oryx, is going to be renamed to Zoolander, <laughs> which I think is funny. And Lynette Morton is going to be renamed to Annie. Now, I think we've probably renamed enough staff for, for today. We can do the rest of them in another episode. Oh, we've researched monkeypox, which is good because we're trying to save our animals, which is definitely a worthwhile, worthy cause. A worthwhile cause, you, should, you might say. Um, I'm going to set Dr. Doolittle and Beverly Ann to research the Goliath frogs. Oh, wow, okay. Well, that was quick. Bet research is complete. <laughs> um, so they've done that. They're going to just finish up on those, and then I'm going to set them, if they've done the Goliath frog, I think they should probably do... Oh, no, it's just that level. Okay, I thought that was the last level. Um, obviously not. They've got a couple left. Uh, once they complete the Goliath frogs and the uh, Lemon's poison frog, I think, is there one more exhibit animal? Is that all of them? I think we might have one more, um, but it's escaping me right now. Oh, the iguana right there. Okay, yeah, once we've done the iguana as well, then we'll move on and uh, start researching our habitat animals again, because I think we should probably start with our red pandas because they're getting a little bit... Um, a little bit antsy about not having uh, all the toys in Richmond that they sh that they want. I've also seen that this tour is a bit busy and the uh, the educators are a little bit taxed. So I might hire another educator and just assign them to the same uh, zoo area so that they can um, they can help out so to do the uh, the tour. Uh, where is it? European exhibits tour, and then hopefully that will help spread the workload and they'll be okay i think the asia entrance is just because they're not super well trained up yet but we may need two for that we'll have to see how they go and i think all our animals have passed quarantine including all the dogs which is great so i'm gonna oh i can see three dogs in there oh my goodness no melman melman's about to die of old age oh he is he is the master of our zoo he is he's the og really i mean but that's still alive as far as I'm aware. Oh, bless him. He's lived a good old, good old age as well. Poor Melman. We'll, uh, we'll do some special statues. I did say I'd do a memorial on this episode, but I'll do it in the next one, I think. Oh, Melman. That was quite a dramatic death. Oh, he's still moving. Oh, is that one of those things where like the body keeps, I, I'm, I think it might just be uh, a bit glitchy. Oh, poor Melman. Okay, well, is this another dead animal or are they asleep? Oh my goodness, Sugar's dead as well. What is going on in this habitat? Is this some kind of silent disease? Why is everyone just watching? Someone get in here and do something. I mean, not the giraffes, obviously, but... <gasps> oh my goodness. And at the same time, look at this fella. We've got an albino or albino uh, giraffe. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've even seen one of these before. This is amazing. Wow, he may have to be our new male in the habitat. And I think 
we had some great names for giraffes. I think this little guy is going to be called Howard. Oh, the only problem is he is going to um, have parents and uh, siblings in the yeah. So we may keep him to try and breed uh, the albino ones or albino ones, but um, we're going to have to make a decision. We could even have two, two habitats for giraffes if we want. Um, let me know in the comments what you think we should do as well, because this is a really cool opportunity. But to do that, we'd have to release all his siblings and his parents into the wild, which um, we could do, but we'd have to get more giraffes. <laughs> and uh, the whole point is to breed as many as possible, um, not necessarily to breed albino animals. Oh, we've also got Terry in here. Oh, he's got, yeah, he's got his male siblings in here. Oh, well, we can take Bambi off contraceptives now. Because uh, Melman's no longer here. Okay, so I realise there's queuing for the quarantine building because we can only have eight animals in here. But that's absolutely fine because we're going to send all of our horses into our new horse habitat. Which is called Habitat 51, but is soon to be called... Prowalski's horse. Pres well, Wielski? Have I spelt that right? Probably not. Prowalski. I really should. I really should just know these things. <laughs> Cupcakes died as well. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those where just a whole... You get a bunch of animals at the same time, and then you have like a wave of animal deaths. <laughs> oh, bless them. Well, hopefully soon we'll have some more babies to offset the deaths, and it won't seem quite so sad. We are going to need some hard shelter, and I think for the horses, I'm going to copy one of these shelters because I love, I love how big it is, and I think it does a really good job. Um, in providing a good amount of shelter and it's mostly made of wood. We have got kind of I think probably corrugated steel uh, roof and some some steel beams, but There's only so much we can do about that and I don't think they need an all wood uh, Enclosure really we're, we're very very sustainable so far in this zoo and I don't think a little bit of steel is gonna hurt So we do need to add some bedding into it as well. I'm just going to do now Oh, I think it's them, actually. Oh, my goodness. Look at them. Oh, and they're going to clip together. Right, one of you run away, and then we can focus on them. <laughs> Here we go. Look at them. They're beautiful. See, it's straight into the shelter. They love it. <laughs> oh, I think there might be thunder coming in. It's a bit of a boom. Oh, wow. They're so pretty. Look, and the kids can learn about these. How amazing is that? It's so, oh, I love it. Um, we can have the path come down this way as well. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Actually, no, we've got two sides. We've got two sides of the habitat where the people can see them. Um, they should be able to get a, a decent view. And I can't remember whether whether they're shy around humans or not. Um, no, they're confident. They're confident around humans, so they absolutely don't mind. That's perfect, actually, to be next to the, the zoo education area, the zoo school, because all the kids are probably going to be a little bit noisy, and uh, this way they're not uh, they're not bothered by it. I should also change the colour scheme of the seating now that I see it, so that it matches the rest of the seating we have in the zoo. <laughs> and just like magic, there they are, <laughs> in the correct colours. So we need another solar panel to be repaired, that's absolutely fine. Set it to three months, hopefully that will help another one there does that need to be set to three months yeah uh, we may just need some more mechanics but i think at the minute our mechanics are doing okay and oh no they have high workload okay so this is the time to get more mechanics let's hire another couple of mechanics just to be around the zoo and uh to help fix these things that should help us out because our zoo is getting bigger now and we've got a lot of a lot of barriers for them to maintain as well so hopefully this will help um, we may need to start um, sectioning them off as well into different areas of the zoo, like we have the other the other stuff. And speaking of, we need to set this into our work zones, uh, our work zones, so that the uh, the keepers, the educators, everyone can uh, can access them. So we're still going to whack this on Asia entrance, and we're going to put this education point on there as well. And I think that's actually a really good uh, point to make sure that we've set these up correctly because I don't know what time. See, we've set this for March, and I imagine we've got some other talks going on. I think the lot, the bear habitat one ended in October. 
So this talk shouldn't be really for March. This should be for um, October, November, December. And then we should probably have this one in February. Need to check when the first one is. I think the first one might be the pangolins. They're in June. And these ones are in, oh, that's in March. Okay, they've got to be all the way down there. So in that case, I think we should probably set this one to be in January. And we may just need to get two educators for this area, but that's absolutely fine because we can think of one of them as being in the zoo school as well. Oh, it's doing a lot of rain right now. Right, let's get some, uh, let's get some water. Let's get some, oh, they're quite happy with the makeup actually of the land as it is. They like a lot of long grass, so that's, that's fine. We can leave it as it is. Uh, we do need to get some rocks and, and nice nature in. They're happy with nothing, but I think we should put a few bits in for them. Also going to add our dogs into the uh, African wild dog habitat now that they're done in quarantine so that they can start settling in African wild dog habitat. And the first thing you should always do, <laughs> I'm going to emergency capture this animal. First thing you should always do is go on your heat map and just check that your animals can't jump out like these can here. So it shows you that there's a jumpable escape point all on these areas, which is what we want to avoid. So I think it, that's just going to be the case here of just raising this area of, back, of uh, habitat up very slightly. Um, in fact, I'm gonna put it there because I'm not quite sure how far it needs to be. Just where we've got this hill. Um, and let's click play and see how that recalculates. Yep, they can't jump there, but they can jump here. I think it's just because basically there's, um, it's not so high for them to land like that they can basically land on the, the hill there. So let's just raise these up as well, very slightly. And then click play, click on them again on habitat, and let's have a look at the traversable area. Oh, we definitely don't want them to jump there, which this one is about to. Let's just raise these barriers up very slightly. Oh, and they've gone. They are running wild. <laughs> Got emergency capture them as well. Um, let's check them now. No, they can't escape now. That is all good. That's what we want. Okay. Well, they, they can be collected and uh, then put back. <laughs> Such a ridiculous uh, way to start the habitat off. Um, I'm also going to put some bedding in and, and get the nature sorted for this habitat. Okay, I think that looks pretty good now. Now that we've added some more, um, some rocks and some plants. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, we do need that horse to be moved still. <laughs> and they're right at the top end of what they're happy with uh, environment wise. And they've got more than enough space. Um, they do need some enrichment, we can, we can just add right now. Okay, and we're gonna give them a graze ball feeder around there. A hang, actually, we're gonna put a hanging graze feeder there. Put the graze ball around here. Put the hanging graze feeder there. 
a melon feeder here just because they're like quite well melon feeder over here because they're all quite in view then for uh, the guests to see let's put a, a grab ball around the back let's put a rubbing post around the back as well maybe add another grab ball around here a sprinkler by the water somewhere have a sprinkler on this hmm, maybe around here a uh, scarecrow feeder should definitely have one of these so maybe we should put this here and i don't think we need the trees we can have a large barrel feeder if we haven't got one already we don't let's put a large barrel feeder there they've got loads of different ways to get fed and they've got a couple of toys as well we need to see how whether they're happy with the amount of toys they've got um but they should definitely be happy with the amount of food enrichment yes they are they're very happy which is amazing we have everything we need um, I think we'll rename them in a future episode, perhaps the next one. Um, but for now, they are as happy as they can be. <laughs> We've still got some things we need to fix. Oh, we're about to inbreed. Don't want to do that. Let's um, stop you, mister. Um, as long as you're not inbreeding, I think we're all okay. Got loads of new dogs that have just joined the zoo, which is amazing. And I think... This is probably enough for this episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.